authority is anointing. The divine Messiah's power or authority is anointing. Look with me at verses 23 through 27 of chapter 21. We didn't read them before, but I'll read them now if I may. Matthew 21, verses 23 to 27, it says, Now when he came into the temple, the chief priest and the elders of the people confronted him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Now listen to what Jesus said. Jesus answered and said to them, I also will ask you one thing, which if you tell me, I likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, where was it from? From heaven or from men? That's a very reasonable question, isn't it? And they reasoned among themselves. Remember, these are the chief priests uh, that have come to Christ in the Sanhedrin. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say, Then why didn't you believe him? That would be a logical conclusion. And they go on in verse 26, But if we say from men, we fear the multitude. All count John as a prophet. Now notice what they're saying. If we agree that he's from heaven, then we have to accept Jesus Christ's ministry, and we have to accept John's words and preaching. We don't want to do that. Moreover, if we say he's from men like we really believe, we're afraid of the people. We're afraid that uh, we'll lose our position. Notice, no concern for truth, just for position, just for advantage. And so they answered Jesus and said in verse 27, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. Let's wind this up if we may. In this text, remember Jesus Christ is coming into the city on a, on a colt of a donkey, a foal of a donkey. A little thing, not glorious, very humble. All of it parallel to what David did with Solomon. David wanted Solomon on David's throne, but here is the son of David, the ultimate son of David, who's come to sit on David's throne. But as Gabriel announced to Mary when Jesus was conceived, he says he will sit upon David's throne and he will reign forever and ever. And so when Jesus came, he came with the obvious intent of fulfilling in the ultimate sense what David did with Solomon in a small way. <clears throat> Now think of what David, what David did with Solomon. In 1 Kings 1, he had Nathan that was the prophet that would anoint Solomon as king. Jesus is asking, was John the Baptist from man or from God? From man or from heaven? Who sent him? We know the obvious answer, Scripture tells us, is he was sent by God. John the Baptist came baptizing, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Baptizing them in the water of repentance and faith. Jesus came, you'll remember, in Matthew chapter 3. It says that Jesus came, and as Jesus came to John, John first resisted, and then Jesus said, suffer it for righteousness sake. And so John baptized Jesus Christ. You remember what happened? As he rose from the water, it says... The heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus. In other words, anointed Jesus. And the Father bore testimony. This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. Not an anointing with oil like Nathan did with Solomon, but anointing with the Holy Spirit. The fullness of the Spirit, the third person of the Godhead, coming upon Jesus Christ for the fullness of of this ministry of Messiah. You know, you find in Luke 4, Jesus uh, is, uh, earlier in his ministry, Jesus was at the uh, synagogue in Nazareth and there uh, they gave him the scroll of Isaiah, Isaiah 61. And Jesus opened the scroll and he says, you know, the spirit of the Lord is upon me 
you know, to preach the gospel to the poor and give sight to the blind and to enable the lame to walk and to proclaim, to free the prisoners and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, Jubilee. And Jesus said, today, the scriptures fulfilled in your hearing. The one who has the fullness of the spirit, the spirit of the Lord has come upon him, anointed him. Well, beloved, he did something else there in the temple. I don't know if you noticed, we glossed over it quickly. But it said he healed the blind and the lame. Perfect illustrations, both of his sovereign kingly rescue. The blind who cannot see. You know, the scriptures say that we're blinded by the God of this world or the deception of this world. It says that you and I are in bondage to sin, slaves to sin, powerless to do anything for ourselves and to see. And in 2 Timothy 2, it talks about how when God grants repentance, the first thing that happens is we come to a knowledge of the truth and we come to our senses and we escape the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. And so when you see that, it is the Lord giving us eyes to see. The God who commanded light to shine out of darkness sheds light in our heart that we may, not, we may see the glory of God in the face of Christ. He gave the blind eyes to see and the lame those who are powerless to do anything, to go anywhere, to motivate, to walk, to run, to do anything for themselves. He is the one who enables. This is who this Messiah is. God, the Savior King, Hosanna. Well, I don't have time to turn there now. But if you were to look over in uh, uh, chapter 22, Verses 41 to 45, you see Jesus asking them questions. He asked them a question. He says, who is the son of David? And he quotes Psalm 110, where David says, the Lord, all caps, that's Yahweh or Jehovah, said to my Lord, that is Messiah, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool for your feet. It says, if David called Messiah Lord, then whose son is he? Wait a minute, he's supposed to be the son of David. But David called him Lord. No point he's getting across. He's the son of God and the son of David. You know, the Bible ends that way, doesn't it, practically? Revelation 22, where it calls Jesus Christ the root and the offspring of David. The root, the one who created him and upholds him and sent him and everything else, and the offspring. So he's both the root, God, the creator and redeemer, and the offspring. The one who is fully human as well, to be redeemer with his own blood. As we see here in this text, this is the one who came riding on a donkey. The kings ride in grace and justice. One final thought, you know, when he came the first time, he came in that sense of grace and salvation, humility on a donkey. The Bible says when he comes the second time, you come on a white horse from heaven as a warrior king all those outside of christ the day of salvation will have ended today is the day of salvation scripture tells us beloved may we learn from this and see oh we don't want to be those of empty worshipers we want to receive our lord in every day in this humble submission bowing to a king that's what the faith looks like of a a Christian, one that joyfully rejoices and says, Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna on high. Beloved, may you worship and glorify this Lord this day with me. All glory be to his name.